Hello and welcome to Construction Week's Expert Interviews, where we speak to experts about the latest trends and challenges molding and shaping the real estate, construction, and infrastructure sectors. Joining me today is Mark Raymond, Partner, Energy and Infrastructure at Pinson Masons. Mark, how has COVID-19 affected the construction industry in terms of supply chain and project financing? Well, I think um, we've seen a number of uh, impacts. If we just look at the project financing side first, um, there's definitely been a slowdown. Um, we've seen delays in approvals, the delays in granting of licenses, and mainly this has been due to, I guess, a degree of caution and reluctance, um, particularly in relation to committing new funds. But in relation to existing projects, um, one of the real, uh, really interesting developments is the um, delays and requests in respect of um, action plans and contingency plans which um, have been asked and requested uh, in respect of those particular projects to how to deal with COVID-19 issues. Um, and that's been a real feature. Um, and we've seen also that's been a massive knock-on effect to existing projects as well. So in terms of the supply chain, um, I, I'm sure everybody who's been working in the construction sector in the UAE over the last two or three months will be very well aware of some of the real challenges in terms of um, pressure on the supply chain, um, problems around um, materials being delivered, um, issues around labour and the workforces within the projects themselves. We know that there's a number of projects that have been suspended uh, simply because they haven't got enough senior management available, um, either because they've been um, uh, either because they've been repatriated uh, because of outbreaks within the uh, labour force um, or there simply isn't sufficient numbers available for safe operation of sites. Um, so we've seen a number of pretty significant impacts. Probably the most important though, uh, other than the direct imp imp influence of the uh, COVID-19, is payment issues and, and that's definitely been putting supply chain under huge, huge pressure. Right. As the UAE looks to find its way out of the COVID-19 crisis slowly with businesses coming back to 100% permitted, how is the construction industry going to be adjusting to this new normal? <laughs> well, I guess, I guess one of the questions is, what is the new normal? Right. Um, so, I, I, and I think that's, that's an interesting one. I think the um, people are still trying to work that out. I guess that's the million dollar question. Um, I, I think one can certainly see that there's, um, you know, some indications about what, what the, uh, the industry is going to look like. Um, I think it's going to be a mixture of uh, changes in the, in the physical, uh, the, the built environment and the cultural, the way in which we do business, um, the way in which we organise ourselves in the construction sector. So just looking at the built environment at the moment, um, I guess what's really interesting is what is it that people are going to need in the future? Are we going to need the big office blocks? Uh, are we going to need the big sort of areas where people can gather? Um, you know, I, no, I, I suspect the answer is we're going to move away from that. They're going to be looking at a more flexible and adaptable workspaces. Yeah. I think there's going to be different demands in, in relation to uh, what is going to be produced and indeed what has already been produced and how that can be adapted and made flexible uh, to reflect you know the requirements for social distancing the fact that people will not be able to be corralled together in very small prefabricated buildings to do design work so that's the physical side of things I think culturally the, the changes that are going to have to be made are re reflect what I've just been saying about agility in the workforce um, People who uh, work from home um, are going to be very reluctant, I suspect, to come back into an environment, particularly where there's going to be, you know, still uncertainty. And there's, unless there's a, a, a cure or a, some sort of vaccine that's developed very shortly, 
So as I said, it's a mixture in terms of what people need to do. They're going to need to adapt to the physical environment, but also there's got to be real fundamental cultural changes as well. We've seen liquidity concerns, delayed payments, late handovers. Were some of the issues that were raised within the construction industry in 2019. What, according to you, are the most pertinent concerns in the industry that need to be addressed in 2020 and 2021 for it to stabilize of sorts? Yeah, I think those, all of those, um, all of the above will, will continue. Um, issues around payment delays, um, issues around financing, issues around handover. Um, I, I can't see that going away. Uh, I, I think that the, the you know, the, the, certainly in the UA, the construction sector has been struggling, I would say, over the last few years, mainly because of budgetary issues. COVID-19 has, has had a huge impact, but, but I think also coupled with that, we've had um, the oil prices uh, have been, um, you know, going very low indeed, and that again has had a a real negative effect on the availability of funds, the appetite for investment, um, not just in relation to new projects, but also um, in relation to um, you know existing projects as well. Now, you know, I, I don't want to sound you know too despondent because I think there's some good things still out there. Um, you know, we know that there's some pretty major investment plans for all the governments uh, throughout the GCC, but there's been a stimulus measure measures you know discussed by the UAE government we've also seen uh, you know particularly for example in the oil and gas side of things ad um, you know plans to to increase capacity and its investment I think it's 132 billion uh, US dollars over the next 10-15 uh, years um, so clearly there is still money out there and I think what COVID has done and what the oil prices has done has just get, given extra impetus to that tightening of fiscal controls um, and so downward pressure, certainly on prices, which is going to have a knock on effect on payments uh, and also commissioning of new projects. So we're going to see that. Um, I think we're going to see an increase in costs. Um, but those projects that are let, you're going to, you, you, people have to be realistic about, you know, if there are social distancing measures, how are we going to ensure that health and safety is maintained um, because we've seen the impact of infection rates in the in the labour camps and on projects here. Um, even if you get your projects commissioned, you know if they can't, the people can't work because they're they're, they're, they're sick. It's going to be a, a problem, and so that's going to mean looking at labour accommodation. It's going to look at labour transportation, uh, and it's going to look at project durations. And I think it's going to have to be a more realistic uh, approach taken to uh, deciding how long you know, duration project construction periods are going to be, uh, and all the costs uh, which are likely to be required in order to meet, you know, new health and safety, uh, safeguards, social distancing, all of those things which we're going to see continuing, certainly I'd say for the next, you know, six to 12 months, who knows, and probably longer. Thank you, Mark, for sharing your insights. You've definitely given us plenty to think about. For those of you watching, feel free to comment, share, like, and subscribe to our channel for more such interviews with experts within the industry. That's all for now, and until next time, goodbye.